I want to show you how you can send and receive your Gmail through Outlook 2016. To do that, we need to open up the web browser and log into our Gmail account. You know, go to gmail.com, come down here with me, good neighbor, and let's open up, well, for me, it's Internet Explorer. And hey, there's my website, dreamforce.us. Go ahead and check it out for the latest and training videos on Microsoft Office, also instructor notes, exercises, and quizzes. Let's go ahead and type in Gmail. There we go, gmail.com. Hit the Enter key on the keyboard. And then type in your Gmail email address. And then after that, go ahead and type in your password. Hit Enter on the keyboard. And then come up here and click on the cog or the gear wheel and then opens up a menu, click on settings, and then up at the top click on the link forwarding and pop slash IMAP. Click on that, and then down below you get two options for setting up or configuring your Outlook 2016 with Gmail. You can do it through pop or an IMAP setup. What's the difference between the two? Well, let's go ahead and click on configuration instructions. Let's do it for the pop because Google favors IMAP over POP, so if I do the instructions for POP, it'll tell me why. So click on that, and it says make sure POP is the best way to read your emails. IMAP and POP are both ways to read your Gmail messages and other email clients. IMAP can be used across multiple devices. Emails are synced in real time. But POP can only be used for a single computer. Emails are not synced in real time, but instead they're downloaded, and you decide how often you want to download the new emails. So the IMAP is preferred because you get the latest and greatest and it's synced in real time. You don't have to wait for a download. But if not, and you still want to go with POP, well, scroll down and you get the settings here, which I'll cover in the training video. Let's go ahead and close out. Otherwise, you can click on Configuration Instructions for the IMAP. Click on that, and it doesn't tell you, hey, which one's the best. It just goes right with the setup for IMAP. So again, you can watch my training video here, or if you want, you can go ahead and go to the web page and look at it yourself. Let's close out. So if I want to go with the IMAP setup, I need to select Enable IMAP, and then scroll down to the bottom and just click on Save Changes. Don't change anything else. It boots me out, so if I need to go back and change that or get more instructions, again, click on the cog wheel, go down to Settings, Forwarding, and Pop IMAP and then we're back and you can see it's been enabled. The changes have been saved. IMAP is enabled. Now once you have that set up, if you've gotten that far and you get this error 78754 and it keeps asking for a password, well there's one additional thing we need to do while you're logged into your account here and after you selected IMAP or POP, again we're going with IMAP, you need to come up here and click on your avatar or well the letter J in my case, click on it and go down to my account, which would be your account, but that's my account. Click on it and scroll down and we're looking at sign in and security. We want to look at apps with account access. Click on it and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and allow less secure apps. By default it should be off. If it's on then you're good to go. If it's not then go ahead, well now it's off. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So with it on once we set up our Gmail in Outlook, it should work and we won't get the 78754 failure error or have it keep asking us for a password. So once you got that set up, and you can read why it says it's less secure because it says some apps and devices, doesn't say all, just some, use less secure sign-in technology which could leave your account vulnerable and you can turn off access for these apps which we recommend or choose to use them despite the risk. Okay, spooky. But we're going to go ahead and go forward with it because we want to be able to send and receive email. But it wants you to know the risk because we want to be able to send and receive email, our Gmail through Outlook. But, well, there you go. There's the risk, so it's up to you. Go ahead and close out of everything. Come back here and to set it up. Now, I already have an email set up here, an account. So if I want to add to it, like my Gmail, come up here, click on File. Info selected by default, just come down here and click on, well, you can click on Account Settings and go to Account Settings or click on Add Account, and there's my current email. I want to add another email address in addition to it, a second account. So Add Account, we'll click on it, and it opens up and it says, okay, go ahead and enter an email address to your account. So that would be, and you can use Advanced Options and let you set it up manually. It doesn't matter, because once you click Connect, if it doesn't like it, it'll force you to do it manually. So we're going to go ahead and proceed. And because we're doing it 
through the IMAP, this should go really smooth and not have any issues once you type in your password for your Gmail account. Because on the back end here, new to Outlook 2016, it's got the automatic configuration set up as we talked about in the previous training video on setting up other email accounts. Like if you want to set up your Yahoo email to be able to send and receive your Yahoo mail through Outlook. Well, like I said, we covered that. So let's go ahead and type in our password. Hit enter on the keyboard. That's it. I mean, with IMAP, that was awesome. Fast and simple. Click okie dokie, and there you go. I have two separate inboxes here. And here comes all my emails now that it's synced up. And here's my other email account going into that inbox. And if you need to make any changes, then just come up here and click on the File tab. Go backstage. Go down to Account Settings and click on Account Settings. And there you go. There's my original. That's the default email for sending and receiving email. So when I click on the new email, it's going to come from this unless I change it. But I digress. We haven't even covered that yet. But there you go. Need to make changes to it. Go ahead and select it and click on Repair. And, you know, if you mistype the password, type it in correctly here and get it set up. Or you can just go ahead and double click on it and make the changes there. But it brings up a good point that it's the same setup that when we went to the gmail.com, it had the imap.gmail.com and the smt.gmail.com. See, it set it up for you, the incoming and outgoing server names, when you use the imap feature, which makes it so slick. And then over here, you got more settings which there's the outgoing server is set that up check the box and the defaults and then the advanced the incoming imap server 993 465 and then use the following type of encrypted connections the secure socket layer for incoming and outgoing see you don't have to do that isn't that great it automatically does it when you do the imap but if you didn't do the imap yeah it's going to ask you to manually configure all that but that's okay just go ahead and follow this video and click on the link that i showed you to be able to scroll down and configure it for a POP email account as opposed to an IMAP. And then when I close out, mail to keep offline, all of them, or how about uh, the last six months. So when you're not connected, it'll have the last six months of email in Outlook here for you to peruse through and read. In any case, I'll just go with all. And you can go ahead and click next. When you do, it's going to test the account settings to see if everything passes with a green check mark. If it's a red X, a failure, well, then go ahead and set up correctly. Type in your email address. Most likely that's the issue. Go ahead and click close. It says, hey, you're all set. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. Now you've got your Gmail, at least this one, to be able to send and receive through Outlook 2016. And when you're done, you want to get rid of it. With it selected, go ahead and click on remove. And you can see it's right there. So all the emails coming into that box are routed to the gmail.com. And for the other email address, it goes to that inbox, special K at videotrainingpro.com. In any case, careful. If you remove this account, its offline cache content won't be deleted, but it'll still be available at gmail.com. It just won't be available offline on my computer here through Outlook 2016. You want to continue? Yes. And it's gone. So that's how you can go ahead and set it up. And in a wink of an eye, remove it. And it's ghosting here. The test message will disappear and we're good. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.